Welcome everyone to race three of 24 in the AT&T Champ Car World Series season. Race two of the weekend from right here in Melbourne, Albert Park Lake. Once again, playing host to Sunday's edition of the Grand Prix of Melbourne. Welcome to Avian Sports One for your coverage of the IndyCar World Championship all year long. I'm Carmen Sienna. Thank you all for joining us here again. Two races this weekend, one yesterday that was absolutely electric to watch. We're expecting it to up the ante even more here this afternoon. An absolutely wild turn of events. Saw 13 cars finish on the lead lap. BK Glover will start from pole position for this race. For those unfamiliar, the results from yesterday for the lead lap cars were inverted. 13 finished on lead lap, 13 did not. It was an even split. A lot of attrition in yesterday's race, though, as well. A lot of the teams will be trying to avoid repeating the mistakes from yesterday. Thomas Rogers, two for two. After absolutely having a dogfight of his career in Adelaide a week ago, got a little bit of a gift yesterday. Some drivers having issues making it to pit lane. Natalia Velisovic crashed, trying to make it down to pit lane. Ended up giving Thomas Rogers the best gift he could ask for, and that was a race win to go with it. He has now been 100% on the season so far. Going to be interesting to see how he follows that up here. We saw first podiums of the season for Kage Kobayashi and Shufen Jang getting on the podium there. They'll start 13th through 11th in this field so that's going to be very exciting to follow to see how they can make it through the field rogers didn't look like the strongest team impulse car at points yesterday but was where it mattered when it counted now it's at the end of the 58 laps 58 laps again here this afternoon about 192 miles the race distance here closer to 300 kilometers this is the final race of the weekend and a weekend shared with the champ car world series and the supercars championship the native top tier stock car series here in australia five races across two days of action including and then you have practice and qualifying thursday and friday as well it's been a very busy weekend here in albert park but the drivers are ready to get down to racing here this afternoon it is a lot hotter today than it was yesterday about 86 degrees on track yesterday. We are in 92 degrees, the ambient temperature here today. So about six degree change just in the air temp, the track temp closer to 125 degrees. It's gonna be a scorcher. Makes it very interesting when you think about the alternate compound tires that are on the Champ Car machines this afternoon. Yesterday, it was a lot cooler and they had the primary tires on. They almost made it a one-stop race yesterday afternoon. We're looking at closer to three stops today with how the heat is playing into these tires. And it looks like the grip has fallen off pretty well as well. The warm-up session we saw earlier this morning definitely lending credits that these cars are not quite at the pace that they were yesterday because of that heat. There are concerns of the blistering over those Firestone alternate tires, those red wall tires. Keep an eye on that. The pit window, for all intents and purposes, is wide open today. The starting grid is running at the bottom of your screen. It's going to be very useful here. Again, we saw a lot of passing yesterday. We saw a lot of lunges, a lot of charges yesterday. Are we going to see more of that today? Are drivers going to look at the heat and look at the tire temperatures and play it safer today? We're going to find out across this 58 laps. This is a track where... We saw a lot of slipstream chains, but we saw a lot of lunges, saw a lot of dive bombs. We saw a little bit of contact. Elbows were fully out in full force. It is almost time to send a track side to hear the most famous words in all the motorsports. So join us as we send a track side here momentarily. Again, welcome everyone to the Avian Sports coverage of the Grand Prix of Melbourne and the Champ Car World Series all season long. Drivers, start your engines! The Ford F-250 Raptor will lead the field to green. 
for the official pace car provider now of the Champ Car World Series and the Champ Car Challenger Series, which we'll see next weekend back in the United States at Phoenix Raceway. Cold tires right now, but they'll blister up quickly as the field gets up to racing. Short formation lap here from the staging area in sector three. Soon to be go time in Melbourne, the pace car in pit lane already. Again, BK Glover front of the field alongside Bianca Lucero. What does turn one look like today? We're going to find out. Green flag is in the air. We're racing in Melbourne for the second time this weekend. It's Glover, Lucero, front of the field. Oh, huge check up there by Lucero. Losing spots immediately. Michelin behind. Everyone gets through turn one cleanly. If a little bit of check up there. But everyone rolling. There it goes. Koval Kamich wheel to wheel with Lucero. Lucero hemorrhaging spots. There it goes to Connie. Both airhead cars fighting a way around. The sophomore driver, Lucero, who's gone from the front row out of the top five. Now along the fastest part of the racetrack here to start off the race. Half the lap in already, 195 and counting miles an hour. Lucero on her own gets to 201. But having to back down there in the flick chicanes there. Car spinning further behind. That looked like that was Von Sonnen. It is Von Sonnen and Mia Valdez and Artyom Kozlov. And we are going to see caution for the first time today. There's the Ford Raptor pace car already rolling. Alexander. Trying to challenge, will not challenge for the race lead across the line. Glover will lead the field through to start the caution period. Glover, Alexander, Porter, Kovalkiewicz, Takani top five. And then Lucero, and then you see Michelin. There's Kobayashi, there's Wyatt Jones in the top 10. Wyatt Jones finished top 10 yesterday. Then you have Ishibashi. There is Marcus Petrovic, who did not have a great time yesterday. A lot of the drivers further back in the field here. There's Thomas Rogers and Ivan, uh, Stephanie Portakelli. Not far apart. You see tire marks here. So we've had contact on different occasions. Let's go back and look here at the opening lap and see exactly what happened. Let's start with Artyom Kozlov, who was reported to be in the second sector incident. Stuck behind traffic there. Trying to make some inroads. Had a very poor session yesterday. Not been the start of the season that that three team has been looking for. And that's actually what happened to Valdez. So Kozlov and Von Sonnen will end up being the two that we see careen off into the third sector. High speeds, high stakes. Again, fastest part of the racetrack is right here, and you have to whoa down as quick as possible. Just a little bit of contact for both of them into the tire barrier. See the pace car already mobilized and rolling. Cameron Jackson, there's Catherine Hart who's involved in that lap one incident with Mia Valdez as well. So some cleanup in both sectors two and three. Trying to get everything back and rolling here. Pit lane is open this time, I do believe.
after a good start of the season for Mia Valdez that has fallen rapidly on lap one here on Sunday. There's Glover. Glover and uh, just about everyone coming down mid lane. You want fresh tires as soon as you possibly can here. Von Sonnen and Kozlov out of this race. That is a confirmed ordeal. So two cars that will be ending their trip in Melbourne early and heading back for the early off week here before we head to Mexico City in two weeks for the, the World Series. That's a car spun in pit lane. That looks like that is a lot of contact in pit lane. That is Lecti. Huge problems there. That's called Vukovic out. Huge melee on pit lane. That may be why one of the cars was spun. It looks like Asher Crane was spun around backwards too. They're trying to get that car turned back around. It's a huge melee on pit lane. Crane gets refired and going again. And it looks like both Michelin and Lucero. So Lucero gets some regular service here. What happens beyond that? Oh. That is Kovalkiewicz in trouble. And looks like in trouble there with the, uh, way well beforehand. Shifan Jang assuming their position in the line. Kovalkiewicz tentatively asked to as well, even though they're coming back down pit lane at the end of this lap. Valdez out of this race as well. And we're trying to give Kovalkiewicz space. Again, that engine failure going to count against. Driver here. It's Asher Crane, who uh, we saw get refired and ready to go. Everyone else still standing idle. So we'll have a delay green here.
still on the Ford F-250 Raptor pace car here. Car still stuck in pit lane there. Crane stopping again for service after having to be refired after being spun in pit lane. May as well take that extra pit stop while you've got the time to do so. And for five cars here, for both the Red Bull Highlight Racing cars, that is the 21 of Petrovic, that is the 99 of Michelin, and the 88 of Lucero. Their races are already on the back foot here. That is not ideal under any circumstances to try to start off your day. Kovalkiewicz out with a technical engine failure. So that's a 10 place grid penalty for two weeks from now in Mexico City. Glover front of the field ahead of Elise Alexander ahead of Evangeline Porter ahead of Julia Takani ahead of Wyatt Jones who's now in the top five very hodgepodge group put together here so far to kick off the start of the season So let's go through the full running order here. Uh, it's also at the top of your screen. BK Glover leads. He's been leading every lap so far, but only really had to worry about being contested on the first one. Elise Alexander up to second. Evangeline Ford to third. Then it's Takani, Jones, Kobayashi in sixth now. Ahead of Esther Hobson, Sakura Ishibashi, Natalia Velisovic, and Stephanie Porter Kelly, who is now in the top ten. Looks like most of the cars now are running that were involved in those issues on pit lane. That was, uh, I saw LaRoe rolling on pit lane now. Outside the top 10, it's Kenosha, Rogers, Draco, Zhang, Jackson, Kappenhart, Asher Crane. We saw double dip on pit lane there. The cars that we see catching up to the field now. That is Petrovic. That is Lucero. There is Mateus Michelin. In the Panasonic number 99. And you see the 77 of Lucero. Uh, not Lucero, Leroux. I believe. Having to wait for the pace car. Oh, having to wait for the rest of the field to go through because they left before the pace car. LaRoe will start at the very back of the field. So that's what LaRoe is waiting for at the moment. It's for these three cars to catch back up, which they're going to do so. We saw the lights out in the Ford Raptor pace car. We have six cars out from the opening lap in the caution already here. It looks like Asher Crane is also out. So Asher Crane ended up retiring from the race. They pit Crane that second time trying to fix an issue. It turns out that was a terminal issue. So Crane is out with an engine failure, which is the first for Honda this season. Kovalkiewicz out with an engine failure. And Lecti, Fonsonen, 
Valdez and Kozlov out with accident damage to kick off the start of the season. Not where they want it to be. So lights back on the pace car here. As the rows come back down pit lane. I believe they've extended the caution too. Oh, they've extended the caution because LaRoe had to get towed back to pit lane. Lights out on the Ford Raptor pace car again. Again, a very extended caution period. We saw quick cautions yesterday. Extended cautions here today. I don't think the drivers are complaining too much. They're getting some more life out of these tires with how cold they are right now. Trying to extend the, the range of these tires just a little bit. lap of caution here it's been a very slow opening six laps of this race but we finally get to see some racing get back underway fifty five miles an hour the pace speed here in Melbourne Basically, I'll take the left into pit lane here. Or take the right into pit lane, sorry. It'll be Glover, Alexander, and Porter, your top three. As they roll down the home straightaway. Capacity crowd here in Melbourne to watch the field get back to racing. Green flag is in the air once again. Everyone fans out. Starting with Wyatt Jones. Wyatt Jones, pinch on the apex. Same with Felicevic. F1 made it through turn one again, but turn one was not the problem corner on the initial start. It was up here where the trouble started.
Everyone gets through the first big problem corner. As racing resumes in force. Best part of the racetrack right here. See, that is Rogers right up the gearbox of Velicevich. Slowing down from 200 down to 130 miles an hour. Everyone manages that time. Hobson looks for an inside pass on Kobayashi. Didn't stick. Further behind Wyatt Jones, it's Ishibashi, Porter Kelly, and Kenosha fighting. And Porter Kelly's trying to take it to the Cat Devil Racing duo on the home straightaway. Kenosha still in the inside lane, trying to get two for one, won't do so. Lost it there a little bit. And contact with Velicevic will let Rogers go through on both. Further back, that is Draco trying to get around Michelin. Losing spots big time. He was also one of the drivers that tried to dive in the turn one and it didn't pay off. Marcus Petrovic a little bit wounded still from that pit lane contact. So one of the row back on track as well. BK Glover on an island right now ahead of Alexander. Rogers ahead of Kenosha. Trying to chase down Porter Kelly and Ishibashi. Kenosha trying to fight the two of Rogers and does so. Kenosha gets around down the front straightaway. Good pass there as Catherine Hart tries to do the exact same thing and Draco says, nah, not this time. And Lucero is going to get around Catherine Hart as well. Glover stands alone, two seconds adrift of Alexander. Alexander under threat from Takani. Takani's gotten around Porter. Porter now under threat from Kobayashi. As Hobson sits under threat from Wyatt Jones. Wyatt Jones has not qualified well to start off the season. Has not made it out of Q1 in either of the sessions this season, but he's raced really well. A 25 car, finished 12th. And Adelaide finished sixth yesterday. See Alex, uh, see Hofston trying to find a way to keep Wyatt Jones at bay, but Wyatt Jones looks really feisty right now. Out of the final corner, it looks really good to try to make a pass and clears Hobson before turn one. Job done. And look at Kenosha reeling in Porter Kelly. That's going to be a feisty little fight. Shifan Jang also trying to fight with Natalia Velisovic. The fights throughout the field here. Obviously, everyone finding the, finding a little bit of tempo with this alternate tire, despite the increase, the dramatically increased tire uh, or track temp. Again, the air temp about six degrees hotter. The track temp almost 35 degrees hotter than what it was yesterday. And you're seeing that pay dividends here. Porter Kelly is challenging Ishibashi there. Lost a little bit of time. Approaching the third sector, the final sector of the lap.
Again, Glover with the perfect start of, this, of the race, uh, led all nine laps to make this all 10 laps of this race so far. See, there's Wyatt Jones attacking Kobayashi. A little late in the lap to try to make a move. And that was why. Just wasn't close enough to Kobayashi to make a move happen. Here it goes Kenosha around Porter Kelly. And Rogers will try to send it as well in a three, and it didn't pay off. A lot of scrapping going on here and just outside of the top five. Kobayashi in fifth, so yeah, standing before the fifth top five positions. Alexander beginning to scrap back some of the time lost to Glover in the opening laps. Trying to create some competitiveness at the front of the field. Glover again just waltzing with the clean air so far, which may be a little bit more crucial. Given the circumstances going on right now, Wyatt Jones trying to find some real estate to try to get back at Hofson. Getting enormous top speed in these cars. Reaching north of 200 miles an hour, about 185 is what we're seeing here in the speed trap in turn one. Everyone's spreading out just a little bit. Over for the back, you have Rogers, Velisovic, Porter Kelly, and Shufen Zhang. Porter Kelly taking it a little bit more defensive of a line. His teammates are kind of racing, getting ready to duke it out here. For the eighth position between Ishibashi and Kenoshida. Kenosha right on the heels of Ishibashi. Ishibashi a little bit controversial yesterday. Contact with Kovalkiewicz. While they were battling for the race lead yesterday, both of them ended up having to make a pit stop late in the race. They ended up losing that race lead. Here comes Kenosha to the outside. Ishibashi able to defend it just a little bit. But Kenosha right on the heels. Uh, that 33 car. See second, third, and fourth there in a line. Kobayashi a little bit separated. Porter Kelly peeks to the inside, trying to see if there's any slipstream room. It was a little bit, but not enough. Really down the order there. There's Lucero who's falling back. Same with Petrovic. There is Laroe. Laroe, the only car off the lead lap, two laps down at the moment. Lover sitting 2.5 ahead of Alexander at the moment. He's been absolutely outstanding so far in this contest. Battle for fifth, potentially emerging between Kobayashi and Hofson. Talk about a net motion race for Hofson. Did not have the start of the season that she was looking for. But Kobayashi pulling off a lot of gap there in the final two corners. Keeping the 28 at bay. Everyone now in that stage where the tires are falling off and they're, they're not providing the group that they were at one point. So everyone's struggling now.
Looking to Connie. Trying to make a lunge here. This could be a very good setup for the front straightaway. We've seen turn one become, a, or the front straightaway to turn one become a good opportunity if you can slipstream your way around before you get to the braking zone. And that's exactly what the Connie's trying to set up. Alexander tries to cover it off. And this is where the Connie's going to be frustrated because that Chevrolet engine has the best power output, has the best top end, and Alexander not having trouble finding where the top end's located. Try to hold on to that second spot. Takani arguably faster across the lap, but frustrated behind the, the number 11 car. But again, something to keep in mind, Alexander, while losing pace with Glover, Staying pretty well clear of Kobayashi and company further behind. So there's a little bit of gap management there. Every time Takane closes in just a little bit more. So is Porter. Porter sitting right there in that number 81 car, that Coca-Cola machine. Not far away. Here comes Porter, gonna try to challenge Ford versus Toyota. But Takani's got some slipstream as well. Porter's not gonna try anything here in a turn one. Smart move. Still overdriven a little bit there. Through one and two. And now towards turn three. Kobayashi closing in just a little bit more now as well. As both the Cat Racing Cars have dispatched Wyatt Jones, who I believe has made an early pit stop. He has, so has Shufin Jang and several others. So the pit window opens for the first time on lap number 16. So pit stops will become the name of the game. And that means instead of looking at a three stop race, we're looking at closer to four stops in this event. Nah, it still looks like it could be a three-stop race. 16, 32, 48. Not far from... If this were sitting longer, it would be a four-stop race. Here comes Glover. Takani got slowed up big time. Takani going to stay out an extra lap here. And we'll take a lap lead point out of it. Overcut worked phenomenally. It must be said in yesterday's race, as it had in Adelaide as well last week. Car that I believe has already come down pit lane. No, Michelin has not come down pit lane. Not yet. So we'll see what happens here. Well, that's a car with issues, and caution comes out. That is Simona LaRoe with issues. What has happened to the 11, uh, the 77 of Simona LaRoe? This is gonna be wild. Simona LaRoe has thrown out the second caution of the race, and it was significant damage on the 77 car. What's happened here? This is with Rogers. This is Petrovic that they're also trying to work around as well. Petrovic, the one, the wounded car up ahead. Looks the inside of Petrovic here. Nothing going. So a lot of the field made their first pit stops, but some could not. Oh, it's gonna be rough. Petrovic, oh, Petrovic hits the, hits, the, hits the grass. Big time hits the grass there.
just overdriving it. See if we can better get a better angle of it. It's like we don't get much better angles there, other than what we already have. It's even good to our chopper cam. There we go. Good little chopper cam here. Yeah, Petrovich just drives straight off the racetrack and tries to save it, but across the nose of Laroe, just miscalculates it completely. And that's both cars in the tire barrier. Laroe with an extra hit with the concrete. And that's going to pin Takani and Michelin in trouble because they had not had a chance to make their pit stop yet. Whereas Draco had just come out of pit lane. So this absolutely will help the drivers that had just come out of pit lane. This could almost flip the field. See who takes extra set of tires here. Who just tops off of fuel under this pit stop. But we're under caution for the second time today for a huge crash between Simona LaRoe and Marcus Petrovic. We now pit lane. Wyatt Jones coming up with pit lane once again. So this does cycle BK Glover back to the front of the field ahead of Alexander, ahead of Porter, Kobayashi, and Kenosha. So some of the field did stay out there. A, a decent chunk, though, came back down pit lane. So we've seen pit stops now cycle through, all the way through. Takani now back at the field. 
We're down to 18 cars in this field from 26 to start it. Eight cars out of this race, six because of accident damage, two because of engine failures. So again, cleanup duty underway there. After the crash between Simone LaRoe and Marcus Petrovic. Turn 12 has been the biggest trouble spot. Two of the three accidents we've seen in this race so far have been in turn 12. Obviously the incident between Kozlov and Von Sonnen. Now the accident between LaRoe and Petrovic. We also saw the incident in turn four. which saw Mia Valdez retire from the race. And damage picked up there by Catherine Hart and Cameron Jackson. mile circuit has been action filled from start to finish so far now we get the reset after our second caution of the race Try to reset here while we have time. We'll go ahead and just promote the next coming races here. Full month of Champ Car Racing next week, next Sunday. It is the Firestone Champ Car Challenger Series from Phoenix Raceway, right here on ABN Sports One. And then the 24th, we had the Mexico City. TNT Champ Car World Series returns to Mexico to end off its first international tour of 2024. We end the season with the Champ Car World Series at Texas Motor Speedway. Last weekend of March can be a lot of fun. Be a lot of fun kind of throughout the 30th of march it's going to be the nicola 225 at arisaka uh, arena in night city so we just have that saturday evening on avian sports one and obviously march 31st it is the race of texas for the world series a lot of standalone races coming up here between the two series they shared the weekend last weekend in adelaide I don't do that very often, so we'll be busy all month long covering both series. Lights on the Ford Raptor pace car. Extinguished now. We'll be going green at the end of this lap. 
Again, eight cars out, 18 still running. Everyone trying to make the most of the moment here this afternoon. BK Glover will return to the race lead that he's lost for only two laps, and that was what Julia Takani led under caution. On this restart, it will be BK Glover, Elise Alexander, and Evangeline Porter. One, two, and three. Kage Kobayashi and Kinimitsu Kenoshita in row or sorry, in fourth and fifth. Sakura Shibashi in sixth. Stephanie Porter Kelly in seventh. Catherine Hart eighth. Thomas Rogers in ninth. Andrew Draco top 10. I had a Wyatt Jones, Esther Hofson, Cameron Jackson, Shufin Jang, Bianca Lucero, Mateus Michelin, Natalia Velisovich, and Julia Takani. All 18 cars on the lap. Remember, the cars at the back of the field have the freshest tires of anyone in the field. With 14 to 16 lap stints on these alternate tires, that could be vital. for the top 10 in the championship running at the bottom of your screen. Thomas Rogers had the perfect start of the season so far. Two wins and two races. To open up a 29 second, uh, 29 point gap over Kenosha, 30 points over Kage Kobayashi. Right now Kobayashi sitting fourth. Rogers right now sitting in ninth. Kenosha sitting in fifth. That could close up. But a lot of racing left to do. Not a lot of time. to be able to make passes happen on track here. These laps go by quickly. Pace car is in. Green, a flag is back out and away we go. Already cars peeking to the inside. Several cars peek to the inside. Rogers was one of them. Catherine Hart was one of them. Wyatt Jones was one of them. None of them benefited. Catherine Hart pinned to the inside lane still, and that's going to allow Draco and Esther Hoffson to get through. Here comes Cameron Jackson on the outside of Thomas Rogers. Rogers says no and shuts the door. As teammates front of the uh, closer to the front of the field, that is Ishibashi and, uh, and Kenoshita. And Kenoshita said no to Ishibashi there. That was a challenge for the fifth spot. There you go, side by side. Approaching turns 11 and 12. The trouble corners on the racetrack. Oh, very close, very close, still close. Rogers, though, keeps it off of Wyatt Jones. Wyatt Jones gets ahead. Of the two time race winner this season. Everyone finding a little bit of mayhem here to kick off this restart. BK Glover still leads the way, though. Four cars in this breakaway. Here comes Porter looking at the inside of Alexander. Peeks back to the, the center lane. Realized that that pass wasn't going to be set up. Didn't want to commit to it. 
the objective is to try to make sure you're clear of that car before the braking zone for turn one. Because of how turn two kind of really kind of sweeps away from you on the racetrack. If you're in the inside lane, you have a you have a way sharper approach. Whereas the car on the outside lane can just kind of take that second apex immediately. Really doesn't give you a lot of room to, to operate a maneuver. And we're seeing that. Wyatt Jones trying to find a way around Esther Hobson here. Hobson trying to make that 28 car as wide as possible. Rogers not settling either. He wants to get back into the top 10. And wants the challenge for his third race win of the season. Trouble, trouble, and that is Rogers and Jones. Rogers and Jones in the wall out of turn 12. And cautions out for the third time. Roger showing impatience. Glover leads the field home for the third caution of the race. Thomas Rogers in trouble. Same with Wyatt Jones. And that was all behind Esther Hofson. So Kashi now for the third time. And one would have to assume that this is going to be another pit stop filled caution. Wyatt Jones, see the damage on that 25 car. He is not going to be happy with, with Thomas Rogers. Both of them trying to go for the same thing. And neither of them getting it. So let's break it down a little bit. Swyatt Jones trying to take on Esther Hobson. Behind Catherine Hart, behind Esther Hobson there, Wyatt Jones is. Didn't commit to the, the breaking zone there in three, which was smart. That's part of the racetrack coming up. Yeah, we'll slow it down here. Yeah. Oh, Rogers just kind of sends it to the inside there of Jones. Tags his rear, his right rear tire. I have to assume that Jones had a puncture right then and there because he can't control that car as it goes straight into the tire barrier. And you see Jones pulling up next to Rogers. Pretty sure there's a gesture there that we didn't see. As of right now, so all 18 cars still running. Let's see what happens with the 25 and the two. The 25 especially, that was a hard set of really two impacts. One with the tire barrier, which bounced them across the racetrack. But then there was that secondary impact, which was just straight up with the concrete. Not as protected. Obviously, you wouldn't really expect it to be protected because it's not a typical contact area, but. Some cars did come in, some stayed out. Glover stayed out, so did Kobayashi, so did Ishibashi and Porter Kelly. However, a decent chunk did come in there. Separating the field just a little bit. So Glover, Kobayashi, Ishibashi, there's Cameron Jackson, fifth. That is, I believe that is, that's Michelin. Now in the top five, it looks like. 
sorry, in sixth behind Jackson. Bianca Lucero is seventh, got ahead of Glover. Glover with, no, Glover didn't come down pit lane. Never mind me. Losing track of things. Lucero was, had the pit box behind Glover, which is why I was like, wow, that's surprising. Ahead of Alexander, though. That is surprising. Ahead of Alexander, ahead of Porter. So there was a shuffle there, just on the pit stops alone. Hobson ahead of Porter as well. There's Andrew Draco behind Porter. There is Kenoshida. There is Velicevic, Takani, Zhang. There's Thomas Rogers behind Captain Hart. And Wyatt Jones extended repairs trying to get that front ring fixed. Doing what they can. Again, just to kind of salvage this run. And Wyatt Jones finished 12th and 6th, his first two races of the season, which is not a bad effort. He got into the top 10 of points yesterday. Still on the pace car here. Again, doing carbon fiber cleanup there from outside of turn 12, which is now three for four. For the crashes we've seen so far today. Alexander, the 11 car, we believe has a black flag. Yeah, that is out of the end with the black flag. The 11 car has a black flag speeding on pit exit. That's interesting. So they've got to stop and go to serve on this restart.
Third caution of the race. Glover still leads the way. It'll be interesting to see now what the new challengers behind him will do. Kobayashi, Ishibashi, Porter Kelly. They've all been able to put their elbows out pretty nicely so far today. And by the way, we're not even halfway yet. Halfway is lap 29. So we're going to see in full detail what the difference is going to be between those that came down to this caution and those that stayed out. It's still like a three-stop race. Still looking like that next pit stop is going to come now a little bit later than I think lap 32, which I think was the estimated window. They have one stretching it just a little bit. Trying to make this magic happen. Lights out on the pace car, which means we'll be going green at the end of this lap. Starting lap 27. Starting lap 28 next time by. Kind of highlight things. Yesterday on the primary tire, they were running 1 minute 20s. They're running 1 minute 22s today on the alternate compound tire, which has ended up being slower because of the heat. 93 degrees now. The air temps have gone up a degree since the start of the race. Track temp almost 130 degrees here in Melbourne. Of work to do for the field if they want to make any inroads here. Go back green here at the end of this lap. Glover, to his response, to his ability, has led 24 laps here so far today. Takani's led two, the only other race leader so far. Glover's been pretty hard to contest. So I'll take the right side drive in the pit lane. And once again, leave it up to BK Glover's discretion on the start. It's Glover, Kobayashi, Ishibashi, Porter Kelly, Jackson, your top five. 18 cars still rolling in this race. 
After a third caution comes a third restart. Green flag back in the air and away we go. And that was a late launch by Glover. But here we go. Glover uncontested there. Kobayashi couldn't really get to him. Remember, Alexander has a black flag to serve at the end of this lap for speeding in pit lane. Thomas Rogers trying to find a way around. Shufen Chang almost contact with Shufen Chang. Trying to bully his way forward is the two car. It didn't work out. Bit of a battle here for fourth between Jackson and Porter Kelly. As Porter tries to also get around Lucero. And here comes Alexander to serve that black flag. Here comes Jackson on Porter Kelly to the inside lane. Porter Kelly, though, with the Chevrolet powertrain, will out drag the 19. And he couldn't make the, the launch stick. And there goes Michelin. Kenosha trying to block uh, Hoffs in there and does so. Porter trying to find a way around Lucero. Sends it here. Gonna be a really interesting send and gets it. Wow, good move there by Porter. And Kenosha couldn't follow suit. Now here comes Draco. And this is gonna get spicy. Three wide. Oh, hold on. Oh, hold on. Trouble. Huge crash. Draco into the fence. Huge crash. Jones. Velicevic. Kenosha. That is Lucero. Draco in the fence. What a horrible crash. Safety car is out. After a huge crash, Approaching turns 11 and 12. Absolutely nightmarish crash. That's Velisvich coming down pit lane. All right, take a look only once. And how this accident evolved. Again, it starts here. Hoffman got checked up big time. By Kenosha. At the same time, Lucero got passed by Porter in an absolutely outstanding move. Absolutely outstanding move there. And it puts everyone right in the mix. We're going to stop it here. because it's three wide, Lucero trying to block all three lanes. Kenosha gets it to the inside, Lucero tries to block it and it doesn't work. And that is an enormous crash. You 
see nothing but smoke there. Real pictures here, as they're gonna let the field go through pit stops. Again, a huge crash here, just after the halfway point. And you see Xu Fen Zhang missing an entire front end portion of her car. Trying to limp the car home. And Xu Fen Zhang staying out. That is Hoffson, just now coming out of pit lane, staying on the lead lap, I believe. Huge crash here on the opening stanza of, or in the head, the, really the midway point of this race. Absolutely horrific crash here. And there's not a whole lot we can say that could really just make this better. Welcome back everyone here. Obviously we took a step aside. We are now under red flag conditions here. Ben Melbourne. Repair is being done. We'll have two laps of caution when we get back to green flag racing. An enormous crash earlier in this race took out several race cars. Hugest concern so far is between that of Andrew Draco who was launched into the catch fence at almost 200 miles an hour. Absolutely unreal the scenes there. We looked at it once on the replay. We will not look at it again until we have confirmation of Draco's well-being. But we wanted to relay the information to you that we are under red flag here in Melbourne for track repairs right now going on in that section of the racetrack. Most of pit stops have been made here in this caution period. The fourth caution of the race, we've had four so far in this race. And it's not where we want it to be at all in this situation. Your current race leader right now, as things sit at Kaige Kobayashi, Stephanie Porter Kelly, and Mateus Michelin. Elise Alexander sits right now in fourth place. To huge shuffling positions. A lot of retirement so far in this race. Again, our thoughts right now are with the well being of Andrew Draco, who's being transported to a nearby trauma center for evaluation. We do not have any updates on his condition at this time. Multi car crash here again on lap 29, exiting the first half of this race. Andrew Draco and Natalia Velisovich, Wyatt Jones. Bianca Lucero involved, Kenny Kenosha involved, Kenosha still in the running here, parked further on back in the field. Same with Esther Hoffson. 
both of them involved in the incident, but are able to keep their cars going as things currently look at the moment. Again, in the middle of a caution period, they pulled the red flag for repairs of the fencing in that area before turn 11 here at the racetrack. This is the fastest part of the racetrack, approaching 205 miles an hour. Again, Andrew Draco hitting the catch fence at 201 miles an hour. Um, full speed impact there for the 13 car for the two-time world champion. So obviously thoughts with him very much so at this point. The cars are parked in sector three. Again, we'll have two laps of caution when we do bring this track back to racing condition. Uh, but they are right now doing a lot of track repair work, not only on the fencing, but on the concrete uh, attached to the fencing with all of the heavy impacts there. Multiple cars, again, involved in the incident here in Albert Park. Not the way we wanted our Sunday to wrap up here. It's been a wild weekend of racing. Uh, it's been frantic, but now obviously we're at a standstill right now as we uh, wait for not only official word on Andrew Draco's condition, but on the condition uh, of the racetrack and if, and if we can get this race back going here. We are past the halfway distance in this race, so this race could be called official as it stands, which would give Kobayashi a race win over Porter Kelly and over Matthias Michelin. Obviously, it's been a very frantic race here at this stance in the event. Uh, so we'll see what happens there. Obviously, track officials, series officials all delegating at this time to sort of figure out the right process, the right method of going around here. Um, again, before this caution, we had we already had eight retirements in this race and three cautions. Now we've, we're looking almost at half the field gone from this event with the retirement of Bianca Lucero with Hofson, Draco, Velisovich, Jones, all out of this race. Leaves us with 14 cars still rolling. Uh, realistically, 13 cars. Shoof and Jang still rolling with this group, but with terminal damage on that number 20 machine. Um, so again, just kind of giving you an update here on Avian Sports 1. Uh, we will step aside. We will insert action from around the world. In the meantime, to fill the gap from our other networks here, Avian Sports 2, Avian News, um, Avian Studios as well. We'll pull in some different programming and sort of simulcast all the information as we get it here. Again, under red flag conditions after 30 laps of racing here in Melbourne for the Rolex Grand Prix of Melbourne, uh, race three of the at t Champ Car World Series season. Again, for everyone tuning in, we will keep you updated as we know information here. Again, we are at a standstill at the moment. Drivers will be pulled from their cars. At the meantime, it is not expected to be a quick process to get the fencing in that area of the track replaced, especially if they need to replace the concrete barriers as well. And again, our thoughts right now with Andrew Draco, the fan of motorsports driver, the two-time world champion, expected to be injured at the moment based off of initial uh, musings from the track officials right now. He is, was transported straight from the track to a nearby trauma center. Typically, drivers are sent to an infield care center, which we have in the paddock here. Um, that is not the case for Draco. He was sent straight away from the, uh, from the venue towards a nearby trauma center for evaluation. As we were explained, no, in, no indication of injuries at this time, um, but with the impact that he made and the speed of the impacts that he made, um, a lot of precautions being made. There are a lot of urgency being placed on the driver of the 13 car at this time. Stay in touch. Stay in tune with Avian Sports. Obviously, the Avian Sports Plus app, the subscription service we have, aviansports.com, for all the news so far. We're going to step aside. We'll insert some soccer around the world. Premier League games obviously ongoing here. We'll see if we can get one inserted here and sort of simulcast that across ABN Sports family and networks here. Don't go anywhere. We'll have more information here shortly from Melbourne for the AT&T Champ Car World Series. Welcome back, everyone. We have an update here, obviously interjecting in the middle of the Premier League match between Arsenal and Northampton. 
the Rolex Grand Prix in Melbourne. You see the cars on your screen, the cars that are remaining. The race has been called official here in Melbourne after 31 laps. 31 laps have been completed. The race has been called official. Kage Kobayashi will be declared the winner here on the second race in Melbourne ahead of Stephanie Porter Kelly, Mateus Michelin, Elise Alexander, and Shufen Zhang, your top five following the crash on lap 29 that it resorted in multiple cars taken out of this race and Andrew Draco sent straight from the track to a nearby trauma center here in the Melbourne area. Obviously, they were working on seeing if they could get the track repaired. Parts of the concrete wall damaged in that crash. Fastest part of the racetrack here on turn 11. Uh, approaching turn 11 and 12, which had been a trouble area in this race because of the high speeds and the sudden slowdown from 205 miles an hour down to about 130 to take what was a, a flick left-right chicane. Um, just not how he wanted to end off the weekend. It was a, a frantic race yesterday, uh, and it seemed like it just it amplified to 11. The high temperatures here, 93 degrees the ambient temperature, the track temperature reaching 135 at the time of the accident. Um, definitely not ideal situations, especially given the softer compound tire in use today. Um, there were not enough tires to be used from the primaries yesterday to carry over to this race today. And it showed there was a full effect on display here this afternoon. Um, Obviously, Albert Park, right in the, the heart of downtown Melbourne. Um, just. Obviously, not the idea, not the position we thought we would see here this afternoon, um, given the circumstances here. We do have an update. It's a very vague update here. Uh, given for Andrew Draco's condition here. Driver, and, and it's, so this comes from Champ Car officials here this afternoon. Um, the, the saying, that the full quote is this, driver of car 31 of the Phantom Motorsports Honda, Andrew Draco, was taken straight by helicopter from the track here in Albert Park, straight to... Caulfield Hospital, about 15 minutes away here in Melbourne. Driver was awake and alert, but was transported after complaining about severe pain in extremities, including the back and neck areas. Driver was awake and alert, remains awake and alert at this time. Further updates on the driver's injuries and condition will be made by the team and the driver's family in their due course, but the driver is awake and alert at this time, which is, given the circumstances, a pinch of good news to get us through this this evening. Obviously, Andrew Draco reporting of, uh, of uh, severe pain in extremities, so they took their utmost diligence to bypass the infield care center that a lot of the other drivers had gone through. In the meantime of this red flag condition, a lot of the drivers involved in that incident that made it to the infield care center have been checked and released. Um, so we're going to kind of keep an eye on that. With the debris that left the facility, I think there was concerns over fan injuries there in that area because there is a viewing mound uh, along that part of the racetrack. Something that I think they're examining at this point. We've, we've heard rumors. We've not heard any confirmed reports at this time of any fan injuries but we will keep an eye and monitor that and report on that as we get information here from melbourne but the race has been called official after 31 laps completed kage kobayashi for vantor racing will be declared the winner we have made it past the halfway point this race will be called official stephanie porter kelly Mateus michelin elise alexander shufen jang your top five bk glover evangeline porter sakura ishibashi thomas rogers and cameron jackson We'll round out your top 10 here in Melbourne. Ahead of Catherine Hart, Julia Takani, Kini Kenoshita, 
and Esther Hoffson, the 14 cars that would see the finish of this race. Bianca Lucero, 15th, ahead of Andrew Draco, Natalia Velisovich, Wyatt Jones, Marcus Petrovich, Simona LaRoe, Astrid Crane, Alicia Kovalkiewicz, Nicole Lecti, Anastasia von Sonnen, Mia Valdez, and Artem Kozlov. Again, not the report we wanted to give to the drivers, to the audience either. The race has been called official after 31 laps. Keke Kobayashi, the race winner here in Melbourne. Andrew Draco sent to the hospital awake and alert, but in pain, being evaluated for injuries in a nearby facility here in the greater Melbourne area. For updates, Stay in touch. The Avian Sports app, Avian Plus app, avianSports.com. Keep up to date on all the information here regarding the AT&T Champ Car World Series. We will send you back to the game between Liverpool and Northampton in the Premier League. Before we do, we do want to recommend Champ Car Calendar coming up next Sunday. That's the Champ Car Challenger Series that did not race this weekend. The Champ Car Challenger Series racing at Phoenix Raceway. That is May. That is March 17th. The Champ Car World Series back in action in two weeks' time. We go to Mexico for the Autodromo Magdalena Mexica in Mexico City. And then we have a double header, a double feature, the last weekend of March, March 30th. It is the Challenger Series in Night City at the Arasaka Arena. And for the Champ Car World Series, it is at Texas Motor Speedway, March 31st for the American Heart Association 600. Keep up to date on the information as we get it. As the news breaks, we will deliver it to you via all the methods that we mentioned earlier. On behalf of everyone here for Horizon Corporation and Champ Car, not the greatest way we wanted to end off our trip here in Australia, but we will see you next weekend in Phoenix. Until then, enjoy the game from Liverpool. We'll see you next time here on Avian Sports 1.